Hello, Epilogue Tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play War Groove. I have completed all the puzzles for no specific reason other than to get stars, and now we will see what happens in the epilogue. If you remember a few episodes ago, we defeated Sigrid to gain access to Requiem. Then we fought a commander battle where uh, Elodie, the dead princess from long ago, used a cello to make uh, our units fight each other, basically. We defeated her, but then, right before the end credits, Mercia decided, wait, I need to hold I'll hold on to Requiem, and I will become what Elodie was. So let's see what happens. The enemy within. Elodie is gone. Actually, hold on. Just before that, we may have unlocked a new codex as well, and I like to read these. Nope, we're still missing one. I'm assuming this is something to do with Elodie or the, the Requiem. Maybe we'll get that at the end of the episode. LOD is gone, but Requiem remains. What will Mercia do? My queen! Mercia, don't! I see a lot of purple. You look just like me! Except I've got cool purple outfits. Hello, Mercia. What? What's going on here? Where is everybody? I've come to help you. To set you free. Huh. Uh, well, you're Requiem, clearly. I am you. No, I'm you, but I have pink hair. A you who has reached your full potential. Color dye. Thanks to Requiem. <sighs> Few are able to truly appreciate Requiem's power. But you and I, we know that it can enable the dormant potential inside you. Hmm. My potential... <laughs> You are strong, quick, and smart. Fierce in battle. And now my hair's on fire. Yes. I can help nurture you that. Ooh. No longer a cello. Now a sword and a shield. That's awesome. I like that. With this shield in my hand, no one will ever harm you again. <laughs> and with this blade, you will hew and fell and reap. Reap? No, I, I never would do that. Never? What of secret? You have an obligation as queen to protect and to destroy. Uh, you hesitate, and yet here I stand. I would not be here if you did not desire Requiem's power. No. But I've never wanted that kind of power. Now are you sure? Huh? This place... It's just like home. And it's the home you lost. It's not lost. I, I can still go back. To an empty castle? Your father is gone. There is no one to welcome you home. You abandoned it. It's just an empty place. A hollow reminder that you could not protect him. No! Enough! <sighs> You're not me. And this is not my home. Whatever this is, I'm going to end it. Then prove it. Then let us at last test that will be yours, that will of yours. The final, final battle. It's like a dream. This place looks just like home. But it's not real. And the other me made this place. I'm not going to fall for your lies. Give in, Mercia. Sweet. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> She's got a lot of money there, Miss Dark Mercia. And a lot of units. Ooh boy, this big map. Alright, so let's just talk about things for a second. First off, uh, there's there's Dark Mercia. Maybe we can skip everything inside the castle and just worry with worry about her. The Queen of Cherry Stone's cruel and merciless counterpoint. I don't have a huge army, but I do have a giant, and Mercia with her overpowered heal spell. Alright, let's get this going. Um, For now, I'm going to ignore the castle and focus on this. And we'll see if that works. I wouldn't be surprised if she teleports to the throne room. But uh, we've got some rooms. So let's start moving up. I do have a wagon. I've got the most... The best unit in the game, the wagon. 
So I'm going to assume that there's going to be some tricks along the way. Because this looks too simple. Alright, mages are fast. I'm thinking I'll probably load one of the archers into the wagon. Because they're kind of slow. And we can, like, ride on up. Just so that we've got archers in position ahead of time. Whereas most of the other units can just, you know, ride on, ride on. Alright, let's see what happens. Flaming Mercia with Cello Sword. Oh, I should turn the animations back on. After all those puzzles with no uh, animations. Maybe Dark Mercy is trying to move to the throne room. And we can intercept her. Alright, speed some of these walks around. Alright. Oops, wrong button. Level. As always, I mix these up every time. Alright, animations, back you go. So, here we are. The enemy doing what the enemy always does. Just one tile out of range. <laughs> if I had a penny for every time they did this shenanigans. So we can't attack them with anyone but the archer. That's great. That's great! But we need to engage quickly because, you know, we got lots of units moving down at us from, the, from everywhere. It might be worth putting Mercy in the tree and letting a couple hits come her way. And then kind of balancing around that. Hopefully charging her groove up. These are fairly weak units anyway. That means we can only move up to there. Ugh. Maybe they'll take a stab at the doggo. I want to try to keep my key units at full health. Namely, the archers and uh, damage dealers in general. Wagons don't have a whole lot of use just yet. Move my pikemen into the... Now, I know archers do bonus damage to pikemen, so they might try to prioritize that. Now, I have a bit of money, so I do have a couple heals available. Car uh, wagons just can move out of the way for the moment. Oh, I put the archer in... I put the knight in range of the archer. That was not quite what I meant to do. Look, if, I, if the game just added in the enemy movement ranges thing, I'd be fine. Also, putting uh, a giant up, they probably can't really hurt the giant either. It's another unit that's pretty good for uh, luring out attacks. I just don't usually have one. Alright, anyway, let's stop messing around. Alright, they're going to go after Mercia anyway, which is okay. 5% or so damage, you know. You're only charging my groove up. Alright, they're playing pretty defensive again. We're going to want to try to take that catapult out. So we're going to sort of ignore the right flank and kind of push north here if we can. Which is difficult. One, two, three, four, five. The uh, giant can take out the trebuchet if I can kill the archer. Uh, which we can definitely do. It's going to be a fine line for surviving up here, but um, I would like the giant to take a little bit of damage, honestly, like a little bit of tanking for us. Mercia will potentially have her groove next turn, so if we take some damage, we'll be okay. Uh, we need to kill this guy. Yeah, like I said, we're going to ignore that route. Just clear the path. And 
And then almighty giants. Fear thy wrath. So, you know, it's real nice having a strong, powerful defensive unit. Like, the enemy doesn't have anything that can really counter it. It's weak to dragons or something. Something purple. So, um... What else do I want to do here? I guess I could kind of make a defensive line. I want my units to move up anyway. This kind of makes it harder for them to hit anybody more than once. Uh, so we should survive. I, yeah, because the archer would only be able to hit the giant. And then a sword or a spear or a mage is not going to kill any of these units. <sighs> Let's see. Anything I wanted to put in that forest would be at a fair amount of danger. Want to move up, but, you know, smartly. I put If I put an archer there, we're in range. If they want to attack a dog, though, that's fine. Just gives us better positioning for our archers. I don't really want to throw my dogs away, but, like, eh. They're not going to give us a whole lot of value, so get a good attack off. That just makes my positioning easy early. And if we lose them, you know, whatever. They're not trash tier units, they're just, they're not what I like to focus on. Pikemans are being a bit slow. We could move one way up. Get them into the fight. Uh, you know what I could have done was put a pike in the wagon and moved it into that forest tile actually. We wouldn't have got the attack, but it might have been better. Move the mage up. And... Well, this pikeman might as well walk. And then one of these two... I think this one will sort of defend down here. The other one will get a, a ride. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that turn. Alright, Mage on Mercia. I won't hold back. Totally fine by me. Our groove is ready. A little bit of chip damage on the giant. A little bit more than I would have expected, but still not that big a deal. The doggos, you know. Actually, well, they'll probably still die, but... Maybe not. You never know. You're only making him angrier. Oh, yeah. So they were smart enough to maneuver to probably get a kill here. Oh, technically they survived. Alright, we got knights. They're all moving up towards the middle. If I could kill all the units here, assumedly... Then we can reposition for the next group. Alright, so... Priorities. Probably a heal. Trying to get some value out of our pikemen where possible. Glad I dropped this guy off now, aren't you? The pike formation line is still very, very strong if you can, if you can line it all up. It can be difficult because they're so slow. But when it works, these criticals are easy, and they do more damage than you think. Alright, so... Probably Knight to kill Archer, Giant to kill Pikemen. Start repositioning defenses for this side. Archers kind of defend against anything, any Pikemen that move up, because these guys will get trounced. This doesn't look like enough units to defend her, so unless she runs in with more reinforcements, we should be able to clean this up. As unless she's got some real sneaky tricks. Alright, let's do what I was thinking about. I probably want to save my heal for a second, too. 
So let's talk about healing. Now, I want to use my heal this turn. So I can hopefully get that kill. Um, is there anyone... I mean, we've got three units that should be healed. Is there is there any attacks that we should make that would get us counter damage that we should do the attack, take the counter before we heal? With all these archers, probably not. Because we can, we can lower HP low enough that we'll be able to finish these off pretty safely. So if I move to here... Uh, I'm probably not gonna I'm, gonna... I'm gonna block the dog out somehow. We're not gonna give him a free attack on the, on the archers. We're gonna pull our own dog back, because we're gonna want to heal it. We just use our... Gotta clean this all up a little bit. Um... Blocking this dog in is going to be a little bit tricky, so let me just plan this out carefully. I want to kill everything... Gotta take some shots where we can. dog's gonna move out of the way because it's gonna not be able to help much. I want Mercia kind of on the front anyway so that on the front with the next group because I want to start charging her groove off again. Healing aura. Uh, now it would be nice to have the giant ready but I still think getting this kill is better for now. One last strong unit, relatively strong unit to worry about. Okay, then we've got... So the only difficult part is trying not to have a unit, the, the dog getting a free attack. Um, we could just load the pikemen and move them up. Drop them off, like right here again. It's probably what I will do after I try to kill these units. So what do we do? The knight attack. Then we won't be able to get... I guess not killing the second swordsman doesn't really matter that much. A 2% two, a two or 25% is not going to do much. And, you know, 10% is going to do even less. Okay, so with that, it's protect protection time. Take the sword, uh, protect the archer. Don't want any damage on the archers if I can prevent it. Uh, mage, actually, well, if I move the mage to there, the dog can get a chomp. The dogs don't do bonus damage to mages, but two percent just doesn't matter. I'd rather not kill this. Dogs do bonus damage to other dogs. Yeah, I'd rather the 2 HP or 25% attack there than a full HP dog attack there. Now on this side... I'm just going to group up a little bit. I want my pikemen next to the mountain so I can move in there if I need to. Alright, he went after the wagon! Poor bullcap wagon guy. I guess because there's no counterattack, they figure this was all they could do. Kind of funny. Would have been better if they just attacked Mercia, to be honest, but... This is good. We got a nice choke point, plus we've got all the archers ready. This is great. Actually, that is beautiful. So now we get the, the wagon out of the way. Pull it all the way back for now. And then the goal here, one, two, three, four, five, is to get the giant closer and have the archers start 
raining death. Uh, probably archers taking out their pikemen because they'll do bonus damage and maybe their mage. And then Mercia moves up. They'll get an archer shot back, but that's about it. Yeah, this is too good to pass up. Let's have one of our far back pikemen do the only attack he can do. Just to clear some space. I would like to get Mercia a kill. I don't really want the knights up front until we deal with the pikemen, so finishing off some doggos easy. Then I would like... Oh... Well, by doing that, my one of my archers doesn't really get to help out much. I was planning on attacking there. Ah, might have been a slight misplay to move that knight there, I guess. So the water is shallow. You can move through that technically. It would also be nice to get the giant down to help out next turn. We definitely don't want to leave the mage alive to move into the mountains and start causing trouble. Would I rather start with the arrow or not care about that? Um, I guess the thing is I really want Mercia to get kills for grooves. So... I think Mercia kills still have priority. Even though it would be nice to take that hit. And technically we could have Mercia attack and then Archer finish it off, but... Yeah, because of where I positioned that knight, I kind of screwed myself. Unless I want... To kill... And have Mercia move all the way up. And then Archer... But then, but then Mercia won't be getting any kills. She'd be attacking the Knight. That's probably better for progression. What's more important? Kill units or charge group? Everyone's healed. Like, eh. Alright. I convinced myself. Because this way I get to shoot the, the, the Pikemen as well. And, uh... I really like shooting pikemen. I like shooting full HP units before they get an attack. It's, it feels good, man. Just like shooting people. Uh, Alright, with that, she'll be safe there. Archer will technically get a shot, but there's no way they kill her. Famous last words, but still, I, I can't imagine. And even if she takes a ton of damage, we'll have the Giants back her up. Uh, we could probably finish this guy off safely. So let's do that. And I do have the, the mages able to heal if I need it. It's a little dangerous standing in the swamp. This is always a precarious position. But yeah, that's protected. Oh, the knight technically could get up there. Still, that's almost complete suicide. Th that's... I still don't think a 40% even with bonus damage would be that bad. It would be annoying, but it'd be okay. Now down here... Their archer, assumedly, will take a shot on uh, Mercia, but could attack my archer or one of my pikemen. Let's try to keep our mage at least out of range. Although that would be tempting. But, they, they, you know, they get, they get bonus damage against mages. And mages are pretty fragile. So I think he'll just stay there. And our doggo might move up a little bit, I guess. Well, I want to keep him close to Mercia so we can heal him up when needed. And uh, that's it. Okay. 
So far, so good. All right, swordsman attacks. The good news is he's in the swamp, so our counter should be brutal. That's another 10 or 20% charge. This will be another 10 or 20% charge. I think you get. I think she gets 30 on a kill, and I think she gets 20 on an attack. But I'm not 100% sure. Either way, this might be a kill. Well, probably not. Close, but not quite. Sure, so they did everything they could to attack her, which is smart. She's on the road, low defense. They managed to do 60% damage. She did not charge her groove off, so optimally I want to move her out of the way, get a kill, so that next turn she's got a groove to heal up. And then wipe out pretty much everything here. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, juicy! So good! This this map... I mean, I don't know if there's anything else after killing Dark Mercia, but so far this has, looked, this has gone down real, real easy. Yeah, this should charge your groove up, and we should be able to protect her from here pretty easy. She'll regenerate a little bit, and then her heal next turn should top her off. Uh, what else do we want to do? Lots of archers! So many archers, plus a giant. Don't really want to stand in the swamp. One, two, three. Not like it matters, to be honest. Uh, if I kill these four units, then they have got nothing they can do to us. So let's just wipe them out. Unless Dark Mercia has some cool trick. I still don't know what her group is. I would assume it's the same as Mercia's. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I bet you I can guess. What would be the opposite of Mercia's? AoE, 50% damage. So we might be in for some pain. Might just kill Mercia straight off. Gotta rem I don't know if that's it for sure, but I wouldn't be too surprised. So I would like to have my units on the mountains. None of these attacks should matter too, too much. The question will be what Mercy is. Her groove's not ready yet, but like that's the only thing I can think of that'll really cause me much trouble right now. Could move one of my pikes up again too. I want I want my archers up front. Well, not front front, but closer. No. Silly. Pikes up. Archers up. We want... I think what I'll do is I'll take my rearmost pikeman and move him up. All the way down here, actually. Not in range of her attack, but... So technically we can do crits there, and then we're going to want both knights here, out of range, but up front. Lots of movement. That way my pikemen can move up. My doggo can stay nearby. Doggos, you know, whatever. They're, they're not very good against commanders anyway. Alright, there she is. Do we just win right here? Because I, I would assume we can just kill her. 40% damage. It's like a puzzle, guys! This is a puzzle map! I actually can't get as many attacks on her as I would like. Um, if I killed that pikeman... We could definitely get two archer shots. I, I don't think we're going to kill her. <laughs> Ah, oh, she's too good. She found a good defensive spot anyway. But I mean, I assume this is not the end. That does get me a 30, a 70, 80, 
Probably 90. Oh, man, that's not too far off, but I think we're going to be a little bit short. Is there any other tricks I could do? Unfortunately, Mercia... Well, Mercia can't attack her. So what we'll probably do is have Mercia heal whoever she attacks in counterattacks. And it would be advantageous to open with ranged, because it'll reduce her counter. And she doesn't have any defense bonus on the road, so... We will move there, but the knight has to go... Uh, we'll, we'll do the giant first, because the giant's pretty tanky, so he can, he can take a hit. Slap! Yeah, I don't... Oh, look at this. As soon as you hit her. <laughs> Did you really think you could get rid of me so easily? I'm an ember burst into flame, Mercia. I will consume you. I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah, oh, reinf... Oh, the doors are open. Well, that's fair. The doors! They disappeared. Driving her back and defeating her forces is weakening her grip. She's losing control of the place. We just have to keep fighting. All right. Just keep embracing Requiem's power. We got a bunch of money! Okay, well... I mean, that... I would have been really surprised if there was no value in attacking this castle. So it looks like... Maybe we're supposed to kill all the, the units in the next sort of open section and then the doors open? Shouldn't be too bad. We can definitely heal this round. We're gonna... Like sort of a slight change of plans here, clearly, but let's get this heal off. I'll say you all. Healing aura. All right, everyone's nice and healthy. So I don't really want to go in that door. I think it's these two doors to kind of be efficient. How do I want to run this? Lots of pikemen for my poor, my poor uh, cavalry guys. Let's just be threatening, even if I'm not pushing in just yet. This is gonna get a little bit, a little bit blocked up here. Sure, just to help speed things up a little bit. Archers are going to start falling behind a little bit. Alright, let's see if they're going to be aggressive or defensive. Looks like... Pretty aggressive? It means we could probably defend the entrances on our side. Like if I put someone strong here, or just kind of around. Now they do have archers eventually, so don't forget about that. So the trouble with this... Oh, also, defense. Once you're inside, it's all minus 20% damage. So it's a little bit hard to push through quickly. Hmm. So I think... I'm going to block with Rydia... Or not Rydia. With uh, Mercia. She can take one plus one attack. That's nothing. And we're gonna do the same thing with the giant. There's nothing that could possibly kill him. And then with that, we can start moving up some archers a little bit. Just wanna be out of range of their archer, but it doesn't matter too much. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know how many units I'm going to need on each side yet. But we've got some backup if we need it. On this side, archers won't be in range yet, so... Just getting units ready for counterattack, so we've got the maximum movement, basically. Archer ready to help out as needed. Doggo helping. 
And I've got lots of money, so, you know, spending money on healing really doesn't... That was... <laughs> That's not what I meant to... to <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, spending money on healing is not a big deal. Oh, you know, I should have moved one tile further down, which would have lured them out of the castle so that they didn't get their defense bonus. That probably would have been slightly better. Alright, looks like they're kind of focusing on uh, Mercia's entrance. Just interesting. Man, there's definitely a lot of enemy units, though. So... Can we push up and kill the archer without dying a terrible death? That is always the question. Now, my archers will tear her mage apart. So I like this. I guess I should watch these. And my pikemen, my archers do pretty good against pikemen too. Even if they get fancy castle defense. Now, that's not a guaranteed kill, sadly. One, two, three, four, five. I was really hoping I'd get to the, the archer here. What do we do on this stuff? Like, if I move my giant up... There's no way they could kill him with that, right? Like, if I block that passageway and then just focus on the units on this side... Like, they do damage, don't get me wrong, but it's going to take them a long time to chip this guy down. And then he just gets stronger as he gets into crit range. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can even kill one of their archers. Assuming I can, assuming I can get through that, that pikeman. Which is pretty much guaranteed. I feel like this was a good way to split their forces, so I like this. This uh, little interruption here, I think, is a good call. Uh, let's use the mage on this side in case I might want to send the other mage up to heal Mercia. I'm definitely thinking about it. I'm mad that I wasted that 300 gold, but... Okay. Uh, one pike attack plus an archer attack. Even an archer crit is not going to kill a knight, although it will be much weakened. But this will protect my mage, so I don't have to worry so much about the archer just picking us off. And I know they've got more reinforcements coming, but they're going to kind of trickle in. Well, technically it's a pike, a knight, and an archer, so maybe he's dead after all. That'll be very discouraging. Maybe not. What? Wagons can't go inside castles? Who made that rule? That's a dumb rule. No, no, no uh, wagons allowed in the castle. Strict rule. Okay, we're gonna heal up, Mercia. This way... Man, both of my knights are gonna be in a very precarious position. But, and these pikes are going to tear them apart. It's fine, it's fine. If we lose something, you lose something. <laughs> I don't know if this is really the right play, but uh, hey, why not, right? Unfortunately, my pikemen are just so slow now. Walking through the river. Alright, so, Pike Crit, say goodbye to the knights. <laughs> A single attack and they're gone. Well, at least we damaged the archer. And then they get another crit on Mercia. 
This is not good. I was playing all good until I threw my cab in there. I got greedy. Wow. Alright, not even a chance. So they're... Even with the 20% defense, didn't mean anything. I got tired of playing slow and careful. Decided to start pressing my luck. So, um... That's a, that's a bit of a loss. Definitely not as planned. Uh, well, <laughs> well, can you do? What can you do? Just keep on moving. I think we're gonna have our giant block the the eastern passage here. And if he can get that archer out of the way, then he should be. Unlike the knight, he should be a hundred percent safe. <laughs> There's no way I fail here again. <laughs> I like the idea of splitting up the giant and Mercia as tanks, and then having a healer follow each of them with a, a an assortment of uh, protection. I think that was the right play. I just may not have executed my uh, cavalry very well. <laughs> Well, I executed them, all right. <laughs> so, uh... Just gonna move the dog out of the way. We're not gonna be pushing through here for a little while. Sad to say, but we're gonna have to just do some chip damage here. Do I care about killing the archer? I don't think I'm going to heal this turn. Although I could. No, because chances are one of their archers will attack my archer, so I want to heal next turn. Let's just weaken a bunch of units. I'd rather take a little bit of damage from a couple units and speed up the, the battle a little bit. Mercia does have good defense, so uh, she's not really in any specific danger. It's more, the only thing that he can do is shoot arrows at my archers, really, I guess. They can't even hit my uh, pikemen from this far back. Alright, well, losing the cav was a blow, but I think we'll be okay. Well, I'm not surprised they picked the one in no defense, but... I am always amazed at how much damage archers can do to archers on first strike, but I guess I should learn my lesson. Anyway, this is fine. Now Mercy is ready to heal, basically. And she'll be back to full health. Their units... Oh, good, they can heal too. Great. Great! Of course the enemy has infinite money for heals. That's going to be a choke point for the ages there. Uh, that's going to suck. So yeah, this is rather unfortunate. Um, get this attack off and then heal. Definitely unfortunate. We need to win the ranged battle here. So it doesn't really even matter if Mercy attacks. We have to get those archers out of the way. And this is what we're going to do. So we can't be doing 2v2 archers. We got to go 2v0. And then we'll eventually pick our way through all these enemy units. I don't even care if it shoots the, the pikemen or something. That doesn't matter. I do have my mage available for necessity. But if the mage just heals every turn, which I think it could. Uh, yeah, the screen. For a very long time. So on this front...
Do I just send the knight in to clean up? I mean, can he do that? Or can I just send the giant? Move the pikes up to guard here. I think this will work. We might start stretching the uh, the giant's ability. I call him knight all the time. It kind of looks like a, a castle piece from... Uh, I guess that's a rook technically, but it's, it's a chess piece, right? Alright, I'm not going to move up. Because I wanted to protect... I don't, I don't want their cav to hit my weak units. We should be okay to clean this up. This is going to take a while. Let's start speeding through because I can guarantee that this is going to happen more than once. This uh, round and round we go. That was kind of the problem. Is I, was I was trying to use my cavalry to speed up and kind of make a quick breakthrough. Uh, but I didn't really anticipate what was going to happen. So, unfortunately, we're going to get stuck down in a bit of a choke point battle, which... This might be the first choke point battle we've really had for the entire Let's Play, where we're basically just doing damage and healing both sides of the, of the map over and over again. But, I, I mean, I don't think we can lose because of Mercia's Groove. It's just... And because we've got the Archer superiority, it, it won't take too long. And the Archers are in good spots, so they'll start getting crits now. Um, which will basically mean we kill probably two units every turn, so. And we get their archers out of the way so we don't take any counter fire. I'm surprised they didn't heal last turn. I'm not sure what that's all about. The AI certainly could afford it. And Mercy attacks, but only to charge her groove. She's still going to hold the line. I know I could have shot that unit with an archer and moved her up, but I don't want her to get surrounded, so we're not going to move in just yet. As tempting as... You know, I probably could have. But, whatever. One, two, three. We could get a pike crit. That'll definitely kill him. I mean, this side's pretty much clean. The giant took a fair hit from the giant. Or the, the giant took a fair hit from the knight. And the battle's not quite over, but, like, we're good. I mean, this is 100%. We didn't even need to, to, to shoot this guy with an arrow, really. Alright, and then... I don't know which way these units are going to go. I think... It'll be more helpful to start moving this way. Unless the door is open. In which case we might want to heal. You know what? It wasn't necessary, but... Uh, just in case the door opens when these three units die, I want to make sure my giant's kind of prepared. I don't really have time to run them all the way back over here. Especially when the like, wagon can't go in there. Alright, so probably next turn we uh, try to push through. I might have been able to pull it off this turn, but... Uh, looks like they're ignoring the giant, which is not the dumbest thing they ever did. It's dumb in the sense that he moves the same speed as them, so that you can never really escape. But uh, those two, the one doggo is sort of going the other way, I guess. So we could break these doors down, but we definitely don't want to do this alone. So let's, uh... I think I'll keep my mage around here. Keep the pikemen, because we're going to eventually want to go through, obviously. One, two, three. We probably should move back a little bit, but... If the door is open and they move down to shoot us, you know, that'll hurt. But... Anyway, the exciting side. Now, I could save our attack to hit... Yeah, we're going to move up this turn. We'll be okay. 
And I'll even spend some money. Could have done that before I attack, but it wasn't necessary. Unfortunately, because we're inside a uh, defensive castle, we're not able to one-shot these guys, but... Yeah, I'm still gonna make a line, and then the archer's gonna hit the mage. And she's ready for heals again. And I might want the puppy, who knows. I mean, I always want the puppies, I just don't know if I want to send them into their deaths. Alright, now they're pulling back or something. Alright, uh, let's see. There's, there's no escape at this point. Skipping a little bit of animations just to save us some time now. Not because I hate you guys that are watching along, but just so that this episode is not three hours long. So 69 might be enough. Should be enough. But, uh... Let's make sure we don't get a counterattack in that annoys me. Like it matters too much. Look, sometimes I'm easily annoyed when I take damage when I shouldn't. None shall fall while I still stand. Healing aura. All right, looking good. Uh, kind of assume that these guys might have think they're going after the archer or something. I don't know. Maybe they think they can kill the wagon. All right, so. One thing we could do over here... Is start breaking the door... With the intention of, um... Well, I need the archer to come back. I was gonna say, like, start breaking the door, lure the archer down, and then use the archer to kill the other archer. But... Yeah, let's be patient. I mean, I kind of think once we kill a couple more units, the doors are going to open up anyway. Although this is kind of annoying. Should I specifically break this door down just so that we can clear this up? Probably should, really, right? Okay. You convinced me, self. I figure what would happen if I didn't do this is if I, you know, finish off the enemy units, these doors open, I start surrounding uh, her. We'll probably hit her, she'll teleport up here anyway, and at some point this door will open and we'll get sort of flanked. So let's not allow that. <laughs> nice try! <laughs> oh. So uh, apparently my grand plan is foiled. As soon as these units die, it'll probably open up. Okay, so, uh, you know. I really hope these units don't just keep... I move right, they move left, I move left, they move right. Yep. Right back to that. So we're not going to get an S rank on this map because, like... Because the game wants to be dumb. I'm just going to waste my money here. Alright. Make up your mind. Go attack somebody so I can kill you. The same thing with this. It's like, okay, no, now I don't want to come in. 
just attack the giant so we can do this. Thank you. All this to try to hit the wagon that I can't move. Hooray, you're going to help Mercia charge her groove up. But now watch. Now that the wagon's defended, they'll go the other way. You just watch. Uh, I can't quite kill it with anyone but the giant, but that's fine. Alright. Hopefully we open that door up now. Alright, they took the bait. They went after the dog, or the, the wagon. This mage is just... You know, the funny thing is, I can't even move the wagon to it, like... Even this doesn't really work because the wagon won't move inside. Yeah, this is wasting a ton of turns. Just because the, a the, the AI knows that their mage is dead. So it won't actually engage. And it's kind of faster than... Because I lost my knights, I can't just chase it down. Ugh, oh well. We're almost there. All right, and these guys were supposed to stay out of the way. Is that close enough? Of course not. Look, just attack Mercia. I don't care. is kind of nuts. Just please will you move? <laughs> if you uh if it changes the menu where you normally click wait, it just throws me so far. Now it's gonna turn around and go after the wagon just to waste another five turns. No? Okay, here we go. Thank you for finally killing yourself so that we can progress the map. There you go. I figured that would happen. It's working! The path to the throne room is clear. Okay, so Get Mercia out front. Save her healing aura. Get into position. One of the goals would be to kill the archer. Well, they only have one unit that can come through. Alright, we got a good we got a good sort of plan here, I feel. This side uh, is a little bit weaker, certainly. I guess optimally we once again lure the archer down. I have to try to keep this giant healed up because I don't have a lot of well, I mean I have some tanky units, but I don't have a lot of units. They didn't do anything? That's interesting. Do I just run in there and kill it? Usually they take the bait and attack you. Alright, well then fine. You think Mercia can handle this all on her own? So now what they'll probably do is try to surround her so I can't pull her back. And then over here, I mean, like, I don't really want to bust in there all by myself. Alright, let's see how she does. If this is a game over, then I blame passive AI for dragging it on too long. They are going to be able to get a dog crit, probably. But I don't... I don't think we have too much to worry about. In fact, I'm not even sure if the swordsman can block her in. Although I will admit that dog crits do more damage than I would normally expect. I have never really looked up their numbers. Oh, they can do it. But um, yeah, dog crits don't seem... Like, dog crits 
definitely seem to be one of the stronger types of critical hits that do more than 50% damage more. Like, they get a significant damage buff. Alright. Oh boy. Definitely would have been better to have all my forces ready at the same time for this group. Well, all I really need to do is kill this one unit. And then Mercia will be able to pull back. And even then, this is not a problem. I'm here to help. So this should be fine. We can finish off the night and then there's just one swordsman. So that'll wrap up their little ambush. We ambushed the ambush. And then now we need to start looking into, you know, well, you know, one mage is not going to do it, but. All right, what are we doing over here? So, ha, 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 ha. I think I should still do first strike on their archer, but. And I'm going to have to spend a lot of money healing here, but. I don't have a whole lot of other choices, I feel, so. At least we get the first strike. And they have mages, so if they want to, they can also play the same game I'm going to play here. Which is, hold the line and uh, cast magic. Now their archer can't hit us from here. So we can heal from safety, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing else to it down there. We're just buying time until we can uh, get Mercia back in the battle now. Might have been smarter to have Mercia's group head into this way and have the uh, not Mercia group head the other way. But the enemies are kind of splitting up the way I would want anyway. I should probably let her Groove Charge up. I know I would like her to fight, but... Uh, I won't fail. Groove Charge is certainly one of the main mechanics of the game. Alright, so we're going to want... For now, to kind of hold this entrance, if possible. I'm sure all of this would be way easier if I had a Knight. A couple calves is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean. Um. As soon as I hit him, he's going to be in crit mode. Maybe we pull back. One, two, three. Unfortunately, I can't pull my archer back out of range of the, uh, the, the giant. I'm gonna try to be tricky here. You know what? I think this is gonna work. It bought us a turn. Their archer has to move closer, and if it moves closer, then we can kill it. Good little fallback strategy, I think. Of course, you know, AI gonna do what AI gonna do. 
basically backing itself into a corner. Why not? So, uh... That's uh, pretty obnoxious. I guess, on the plus side, it gives me more time to heal up my, my giant for all the money in the world, if that's what I want to do. And then on this side, I mean, I don't want to move my mage in there. problem with limited resources is you kind of have to focus on Mercia and something like the giant sort of taking the hits. It's hard to rush in with anyone else, as we learned with the knights or the cavalry. Although this is going to give us kind of the flanking maneuver here, in a sense. If I'm willing to do that. This is... Sure. I don't know if this is the best plan I've ever had, but we're gonna do it. I mean, the last time I tried something like this, I lost two cavalry. But, uh... Hey man, we got 100% giant and they have no giant. And they've got... I've got a couple pikemen that are probably not going to be very helpful. But I will have a dog running around their back line in case their archers get into range. And then on this side... They don't have... They have archers, but they're way out of position. So I think... We move up. Keep my mage a little bit back. Mercia here... I'm going to switch positions with the archers so the archers can take range shots, maybe. And, uh, sure. See how that works. Not going to be a fast mission. I'm sure my turn counter is pretty rough this time. Looks like they're pulling back. Giving me more time to line up. Could attack in that archer. Not what we're going to do. I wouldn't be too surprised if they push down towards my uh, pikemen next turn, knowing that they can't really run away from those from the mage anyway. Maybe. Now there, Dark Mercia does have her groove ready. I still think I'm gonna take the free attack on their mage. But this is gonna this is gonna be where it gets kind of tricky here. Still, the only unit they have that can deal significant damage to the uh, giant is their commander, and we've got reinforcements coming, albeit kind of slowly. And I've got a heal just ready, just heals in the cartridge. Plus another heal, if I need it. Alright, this is looking pretty good for phase two. Although I'm sure as soon as we smack her, she's just going to jump away again. I don't think this is going to do what you think it's going to do. Actually, 10%. More than I thought. They are really playing defensive on this map. It's honestly kind of suspicious. I mean, they've got a choke point, but does it mean anything to a giant? No, I don't think he cares about their choke point, you know? I guess I'll attack the one that could attack my giant just to reduce his damage a little bit. So my pikemen will probably take a couple hits. Oh, well. 
Speaking of that. The cavalry is here! Except not the real cavalry. The cavalry died, but... Hopefully these guys will do. As reinforcements. I did technically put Mercy in range of an archer. If they want to have an archer duel with me, I'm okay with that. I don't really want to throw away my pikemen, so we're not going to just rush into that archer. Maybe next turn we'll start moving these guys up, even if they take hits. I am oh, here we go. Aura of Ruin. Requiem power. Uh, I think it did what I thought it would do. Maybe not 50% damage the way healing aura is 50%. But it definitely did damage in an area of effect, I think. One, two, three. So it missed the giant. Yeah, actually, kind of a waste of an aura. And I don't think it could have done 50% damage. Because Mercy was at like 80 or 85. Maybe like 30% damage, give or take. Anyway, uh... Smacker... I don't think it takes too many hits, and I'd like to just get her to move to the next area. Not that that did anything. That was pathetic. I forget how much damage we dealt to her last time before she jumped away. Maybe, maybe 50%? We're gonna do heal this round, and then this way I block their units from getting to my soft squishy units. And now we can take another shot at the queen. I mean me, dark me. Not that we're doing a great job of uh, making her fly away, but... I think we have rolled like minus 5% on every roll we did there. I'm only trying to help you. Alright, the rest of the doors are open. Just gotta clean this mess up. And, uh... Honestly, we've got a pretty good choke point already. So clean this up. Mercia charge up another groove. The pike formation is always, you know... A great way to hold a choke point. So the fact that I got these pike dudes up along here, I'm pretty happy about. Okay. And then I do have some mages hanging around, but... I want to keep them out of range of the health. Like, we are going to take a fairly nasty hit from this one archer, but otherwise we're fine. And then, uh... I think we just group these two up. One, two, three, four, five. So, yeah. We keep my doggos alive. I can't lose my doggos after I lost my knights. It's gonna be a pretty long episode, I gotta say. I won't hold back. Hope you guys enjoy long episodes. Alright, so they get a pretty big hit on my pikes here, but. Should be surviving. This will barely ban it matter. Still a lot of units for us to chew through. My main regret is losing the cavalry, obviously. If I hadn't lost the cav, I'd have two more of my own units to speed this up. But... Alright, so Mercia probably should just get her groove on. Yourself. Like we learned on the last um, campaign mission, Mercia's main value is getting grooves constantly. Groovy, baby. 
Sorry, enemy puppers. But you gotta go down. So I'm thinking giant to the right, Mercia to the left. After we clean all this stuff up. So that means I should probably send one mage to the right as well, and at least one archer. Now those units aren't going to be able to do any real damage. Not going to let them shoot my wounded pikemen though, because they could finish that pikeman off. Alright, so this is kind of going to be our left force, and then this is going to kind of be our right force. And at least we can get to this choke point first. There's probably no way they can break through even a 80% HP pikeman. Especially if I heal them up. Alright, so then these guys are starting to move up. I think this is time for Mercia to just take the lead, heal, and then I'll take a little bit of damage. Healing aura. We're going to have a little bit of a choke point battle. Otherwise, I'd have to just pull back and wait a while, which we don't want to do. I feel like, I feel like I've already gone really slowly on this map already, so... Trying to speed this up a little bit as we get towards the end. There's not as much tactical stuff to talk about now, right? You know, Swordsman fights Mercia, Mercia kills the Swordsman. Next. Archer shoots Mercia, she takes a little bit of damage. Next. Next turn, she'll try to kill the Archer, you know. Uh, which should be pretty much automatic, because they didn't put two units in front of their Archer, so once this guy's dead... We just move up and do that. And now the choke point is even better for us. Brace yourself. I know I'm skipping, sorry. I actually think I'll take the shot on the knights rather than the archer. I know I could finish the archer off, but that reduces the... In Chances of the archer will move away and the knight will attack Marcia, so we'll take a little bit less damage like that. I'm not going to waste my money just yet. We're going to kill a sword dude and block up the entrance here. We're going to kill a poor pupper. Because I'm a terrible person. Yeah, giant. Assuming you keep your giant alive this long, it feels like he can wrap things up pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm glad I shot these knights. Because that will reduce the damage we take by a fair bit. Okay, so now we go Archer to finish him off. And then next Archer to attack the next target. Do I do that or do I attack? No, we want Mercia to get a kill here. If Mercia gets a kill, she'll have a groove ready to heal herself. I know I've got mage money and everything if I need it. I wouldn't be surprised if they just back off, so we'll start pushing up a little bit harder. And they got nothing left. Yes, we'll move everyone up to be thorough, but this is pretty much it. Pikes on Mercia. Maybe 20%. And then, like, a mostly dead archer, but we can ignore that, because it's, like, 1% damage. Uh, 
Gotta be a little bit careful as we break into the throne room, but otherwise this is all pretty much done. It's kind of sad for the poor pikemen that they can't escape the giant. You know, giants are really fast, which is kind of counterintuitive, I suppose. You'd think the defensive tanky uh, unit would be the... Uh, probably the, one of the slower units in the game, but nope. Deal with this unit. Do I need to heal up? Good heal up. Can we push through? If I attack... Shoot an arrow, have Mercia move up, we can push through quicker. So, just for trying to be fast, let's do it like this. I mean, she's going to take a little bit of counter damage, and then she'll get attacked next turn, but it should be okay. And honestly, what I'll do is, could have done this first, and then she would have dealt a little bit more damage, but, you know. Who needs to min-max this late into a map like this? They got her down to 40%. Alright, just keep an eye on their maximum range in here. Yeah, well, I figured we'd be safe there. So then we just want to clean this up if we can. Oh. Unfortunately, this is... Yeah. Oops. Maybe slightly suboptimal, let's say. Yeah, that pretty much... That pretty much cinches it. Alright, so now we're going to start planning our assault on the throne room and finishing off Dark Marcia. And uh, I'll try to do this without wasting too much time. We'll turn, we'll watch some animations again as we fight this last group. I just, I felt like this was dragging on and I wanted to push through a little bit quicker there. Get this healing aura off. So optimally, we would want our archers to catch up. Maybe we could lure one out by moving the giant to that square. We'll see if they take the bait. They might not. And honestly, I need a couple turns to move units in anyway. Alright, everybody's moving up. Except for a poor wagon. He didn't take the bait. I'm gonna test out if the archer will shoot Marcia. Otherwise, getting my pikemen into position. Getting my archers a little bit closer. We're pretty much ready to go now. Next turn, we can consider moving into the room. They did not take the bait again. Okay, so... I wonder if there's anything that will trigger an attack. If I move Mercia to here, she can get hit by... Two archers and one melee unit, which could be a giant. That's as far up as I want to move her. And it does trigger a cutscene. <laughs> Familiar, isn't it? Your father's study. This is where your journey to me began. Uh. Mercy, I... All those months ago, when Sigrid took your father from you. <laughs> it needn't have happened. But your father was not strong enough to stop her. 
And neither were you. No. You are weak. The weak suffer losses, Mercia. The strong determine their own fate. Sigrid took your father's life and left you with nothing except the suffocating weight of grief. But with Requiem at your side, creatures like Sigrid would quake at the very sight of you. The crushing weight of loss. You'd never have to feel that again. Father. The death of my father. It's true, I wasn't able to protect him. But that wasn't my fault. What? What happened that horrible night? It was Sigrid. And the worst thing I could do for my father's memory is to become someone like her. Dad. My dad wasn't weak. He was strong. He was wise. He was noble. And he cared about doing what was right, even when it was difficult. And right now, defeating you is the right thing to do. Pitiful. How utterly mistaken you are. Defeat Requiem! No longer give in! Maybe she'll come right at us. Alright, I've got so many units, they can't even get in the door. I'm just keeping units out of range of the archer spots until they move up. And then my archers will probably fill in, and maybe we'll be able to break through. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll lose! Alright, the giant moved up. That's not a huge surprise. Archers, of course. So this archer is going to be in a position where we can't really do anything about it. We should be able to shoot this archer, though. All things considered, the enemy have a better choke point than I do right now, so I might pull back a little bit. Probably we'll pull back a little bit here. So what I think we should do... Is make a choke point here and let them move into this one square. Rather than, you know, this death trap. And that way we'll have our archers on the side firing in more than just... Like, we have a couple good shots here. And I could attack one of their archers, but... Yeah, this, this, should, this should work about as fast as possible. It's an ambush! You should have trusted in your own choke point and not rushed forward. Well, choke points work best with lots of covering fire. Alright, so Giant can go here. Marcia will go here. They might be able to poke a hole through some of my pikemen. But I do have reinforcements if I need them. And what I want to do is have more archers for now. I need to decide how I'm going to heal Marcia this turn. I think I have to do one casting here. Just to make sure she's safe. Doggo's probably not going to contribute a whole lot. Alright. Let's see how this works. So now the giant is surrounded rather than just 1v1ing. Which should be much, much easier to kill it. Now, they're still going to be able to do the same number of attacks on Mercia, which is... Well, I might have to pull her out, to be fair. But, on the other hand, we will be able to do way better counterattack. Especially if we can kill this giant. So, for instance, how much damage can we do here? 20. 44 with that. If I shoot it... But, I mean... So many juicy targets to shoot. Once we kill the archers and the giant, we have one. There's no way. So, I think we start with a big hit here. Because if we kill the giant, we can kill their archers pretty easily. And I don't think my archers can do... Oh yeah. 
I should have shot it with an arrow and then had my Titan finish it off. Then our t then our giant would be at full strength. Pretty good, pretty good. And we finish it off and we do another pike crit. And then they have no archers. And we're still in a one one attack only choke point, except we have the ranged advantage. You fell for my trap! And we're good. Now it's only a matter of time. Uh, we're not going to push out there. That'd be a little bit too much aggressive. A little bit too aggressive for old Ankylo. But we'll heal up. And... Try to keep lots of units in range if I need them. Just so I have maximum options. But I mean, I'm pretty sure I know what I'll be doing next turn. We're gonna... Um, could we kill her this turn? Probably not. But we should be able to wipe out her... Basically all of her forces this round. It certainly gets some damage done. I think if I get one more kill, Mercia will have a heal, if that's what I want. Although I have enough money, I could heal her twice and move up. There's really not a lot of units, like two very weak units left. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do? Kill. 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 Attack. But I don't think I can kill the puppy without either using a titan or, or a pike crit. Alright, we're gonna do it like this. We're probably... I don't think there is a way to win this round, although it might have been close. But next round we should be able to win for sure. Oh, that's kind of annoying too. Low damage roll there. All right, giant go. And yes, you know who needs to get the finishing blow. Like any good Fire Emblem game. This is actually convenient because that's a good heal target. Fair, I might as well use my money up now that we're basically at the end. And we're not gonna need those pikemen. All right, she decides to go after the giant. Kind of wish that the final boss had slightly better than typical commander stats. I'm not backing off. Get out of my head. But I think the final boss has the same stats as any other commander, which is maybe a little bit weak. She's got to have like a second form where she turns into a purple dragon. Alright, so how much damage can we do here? 40. So she's almost got her groove ready, but it's too little too late. One last giant punch. I mean, maybe she does have some better stats. I don't really know for sure, but it feels like she's the same as a typical commander. It's just you and me now. 
Oh. <laughs> You've killed a part of your soul. She's down. You'll regret this. One day, something precious will be taken from you once more. And the pain of the loss will drown you. And while grief chokes you, and you struggle to breathe, you will wish with all your heart that I was there to save you. Maybe. Maybe in that moment, that's how I'll feel. Hmm. But then I'll think of my dad, and the things he believed in, and the way he lived his life. And I'll know without a shadow of a doubt that this is what's right. Oof. Victory! Hey! Yeah, we got A rank. I thought I was going to get something really bad because I felt like I, I didn't go very fast. I wonder if 40 is S rank. Is that how close we were? A couple turns of bad movement where the enemy were just trolling us going back and forth in the lower section. And I did throw those caps. Oh, A rank, three stars. Good deal, everybody. Get reamed. Mercia. Thank heavens you're back. Oh, you guys are still here, eh? Oh, you broke it. So what? I've broken things bigger than that. You have no idea what's going on, do you? I'm so glad you're safe. How did you? I can hardly believe it. You defeated Requiem. <laughs> if anyone can do it, it's Mercia. I thought I'd lost you. For a moment, you went a funny shade of purple. Huh. Well, I thought I went somewhere. Must have been in my head. Hmm. More like your soul. That is Requim's domain. Dad. I think I know what my dad wanted for me now. Hmm. And knowing that, I understand what it means to be a queen too. <laughs> Dad, he was such a wise person. <laughs> As are you, Mercia. <laughs> Looks like Captain Cuddle is pleased to see you back too. <sighs> Returning to this place after that battle? <laughs> I'm just so happy that all of you are with me. It's time we headed home. Huzzah! A good ending. Except for Sigrid. Oh, no, it's our crown! I thought that like, Sigrid was going to crawl her way back up and clutch like a piece of the cello. Queen Mercia! How can you be a queen without your throne? Or, not your throne, your, uh... Yeah, your crown, that's the word. Thank you all for coming today. The treaty has been signed and the continent is officially at peace. And now that the formalities are all wrapped up, <laughs> party time! Everyone bring your sword to the party! I, you know, she's like stabs her guy, like seriously, put your swords away. There's going to be music and food and dancing! <laughs> so please, go outside and enjoy the festivities! Except for Sedge, huh? he's dead. Don't you guys want to go to the party? We just had a few things we wanted to say to you first. Yes. If I may begin. Thank you. I wish to thank you, Queen Mercia, on behalf of all the Florin of Aurania. <laughs> and beyond. Uh, wait. Uh, without you, we would all have been lost. <laughs> we are greatly in your debt, and happily so. Hey. Uh, green fingers of one is white, Mercia. You saved the planet. People like you are few and far between. You remind me of some old friends in the stars that were perhaps bound to the stars. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> you're one awesome lady. Thank you. Uh, thanks. <laughs> like our Florin counterparts, compatriots, the Heavensong Empire wishes to thank you. You have my thanks. And I personally would like to extend my gratitude and my admiration. It is gratifying, though not surprising, to find that you are so much like your father. Brave, intelligent, and pure of heart. <laughs> the people of Cherrystone that survived are lucky to have you as their queen. Hey! Mercia, you come visit us, right? Nuru said you would. I know you'll be busy, but maybe this winter we'll have a great winter festival and it'll be my birthday and 
I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> of course, I'll visit. And I wouldn't miss your birthday for the... She doesn't speak for me. I'll bring the dog. Ahem. I know I am but a warrior and not of noble blood. But I hope you will allow me to extend my personal gratitude to you. And share with you that I hold you in the highest esteem, higher than my sword legs. Both as a leader and as a hmm, woman. Uh, thanks, creepy guy. Hmm. For my part, Queen Mercia, I wish only to say this. The animosity between our two nations has dragged on for too long. And I, like you, am glad that this unnecessary anonymity has finally at an end. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we agree. Thank you. Perhaps I should also say thank you for the part you have played in reaching this accord and for your thwarting of the malevolent weapon Requiem. Uh, hi, Ragna. So, I had planned to meet your nemesis until the day you died. Yeah! But I'll set her, settle, for being your absolute best frenemy. Uh. Uh -huh. Good, that's decided. Now we can fight for fun. Yeah! And I will smash you. <laughs> no, really, I will smash your you. Highness. I, too, have a few words that I like to share. Throughout this adventure, I've seen you face unimaginable hardship. Yes. And you've come out on the other side, a magnificent young woman. I look forward to the many long years of your reign, my queen. The dog just sniffs. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. When I first left Cherrystone, unaware of the long journey ahead, I didn't know what or who would be waiting for me in the castle. Huh. I always thought Dad was so strong for doing it by himself. Yeah. And Dad was strong. But he wasn't by himself. Now that I'm back home, surrounded by all of you tubers, I know that I'm not alone either. And just like Dad, I have the support of the wonderful people like you. And I'm so very grateful. <laughs> it seems my family is much bigger than I ever thought. <laughs> oh shucks, Queenie. You're gonna make me cry. Anyway, nobody deserves a party more than you lot. Let's go. But let's go and celebrate with everyone else. Guard dog, protect me from creepy soldier from neighboring country. May I escort you, your majesty? Hmm. I guess. <laughs> Maybe we could share a dance. Oh. Maybe she's into it. <laughs> Come on, Caesar. He just strikes me as a little bit creepy, that's all. Hey, we got a victory! I know it's a super long episode, but we're gonna watch the cuts. We're gonna watch the credits one more time. So uh, that last battle, that was a big one. Not really difficult. I would say that's one of the not so difficult battles, but certainly a large battle that takes a long time. Um, probably could snowball out of control if you lost a few units early on. But as long as you keep your units safe, and I assume by the epilogue, you probably know how to do that. Looks like we got some cool sprite work for our dances for all our dudes too. So keep an eye on the screen, everybody. Yeah, that was a, a fun little epilogue. It wrapped up the story much better than the uh, false ending. I'm not a huge fan of needing to do the non-campaign stuff to get the last few stars to get the epilogue. It's not a big deal, but uh, I wish they'd just set it at if you three-star everything in the campaign, you get to do the epilogue. And then if you want to do the extra stuff, you can do it whenever you want. But it's all good. Uh, what else to say? I mean, I already talked during the credits last time. It's a pretty good game. I, uh, I do think I'll probably keep recording the arcade missions, unless they're boring, but uh, I will give them a shot. So uh, this is probably still not the last episode in the series. The series has gone on longer than I expected, actually. Um, I didn't know how big of a game this would be when I started it up. So um, this has been a pleasant surprise. I've had a lot of fun, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the series as well. The puzzles were a nice little break. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of puzzles... For let's playing, I actually do puzzles on my own. Like, you know, I do the occasional Sudoku and puzzly games that I don't talk, I don't know any good examples off the top of my head, but I've been known to play computery puzzle games from now and then, now and again. But uh, yeah, the War Groove puzzles were pretty cool. Um, probably the ones that I thought were really difficult, I was just being blind and didn't see the easy solution because most of them didn't take very long to figure out. So there's probably a fairly easy path if you pay close attention. Um, what else is there to say about War Groove? 
It's a steal of a deal if you haven't purchased it yet. It's, like, not very expensive. I can't remember how much I paid. Like, 20 or 30 bucks, I think. Uh, it'll probably be on sale if you want to wait a little bit. But uh, it's not like a AAA $80 game that uh, you have to buy a bunch of DLC for. It's a full-on game. Like, it's got a nice long campaign. There's no shortage of content. And uh, it's definitely reasonably priced in my book. So uh, if you enjoyed this series and you want to give it a try, I would totally recommend it 100%. Almost any game that I let's play and I get to the finale, I would recommend. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if we're going to go all the way to getting 200 stars, but there's a few more things I want to do. Um, I was trying not to spoil things for myself. Like I said, I've been trying to play this all blind. But remember when I was pointing out some of those weird stone flower things on some of the maps? Uh, I was right when I looked at those and said, hmm, I should move a unit onto those. If you haven't spoiled yourself, don't, and I won't spoil you here. But if you're playing along, maybe you should move a unit onto some of those. It's one specific unit, and it's kind of obvious who it should be, if you think about it. Because those tiles only show up on certain maps where you have a certain unit. I should stop talking. But anyway, um, we're going to do that at some point and see what that does. And we're going to check out the arcade mode. And, there, you know, there's probably lots of little hidden Easter eggs. If you ever played Stardew Valley, you probably would be familiar with some of the style of this uh, development company. How they like to sneak in lots of uh, lots of bonus content and Easter eggs if you want to delve in. And I think Wargroove seems to be pretty similar. Uh, I did talk about the Florins a little bit. Um, like I said, last credits, you know, Starbound. I, uh, I don't know much. I don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, if, I'm sure you could read up some lore on them if you're interested. I hope that we get a a War Groove two one day. This has been a fun game, and I like the like the series. I always have been a fan of Fire Emblem Shining Force style games, and although the Advanced War War Groove style is a little, um, you know, the units are a bit more throwaway. It's uh, it's definitely still a fun tactical strategy game. Whatever you want to call it. I would like to see some new units. I would like to see some commanders that have different stats. Uh, I, what else would I like to see? There should probably be one or two more air and naval units at some point. Because, like, for the most part, the witches were not very useful because they only countered RPs, other witches, and and dragons, so they didn't have a lot of value most of the time. Obviously, they gave them the hex to kind of uh, give them something to do when there was nothing else for air units, but to have a to have an anti-air unit be effective, you need more variety of air units in the game, I feel like. Um, maybe like a range 2 sort of air units that can do uh, slightly longer range indirect fire, kind of like an archer or something. I don't know how that would work. Maybe some more naval units. Not sure how naval unit would fit in anymore. We've got anti-air, we've got anti-land, but anti-sea. You know, I mean, it's fine. You don't want to overcomplicate things with a million units, but you know, I just, I'm sure, I'm sure some creative folks could come up with some cool ideas that I'd like to see. One thing that uh, Advanced Wars did that uh, Wargroove didn't was they had more of a a difference between the factions, like each faction had sort of a a specialty, not just the commander with a special move, but um, each of the, the different sort of uh, factions, I guess, had uh, some sort of benefit, like stronger certain units or cheaper units, or uh, I think some of them, like they, there's like a, 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 an, air un, a, an air faction that all of their air units either moved an extra distance or their air units dealt a little bit more damage. I could see implementing something like that into Wargroove, so that there was a little bit more variety. Because um, all the units are the same, you know, Swordsman from every faction does the same thing. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing some some exp expansion in, in faction style. Kind of, it doesn't have to be like, you know, the way StarCraft did it with totally different factions, but at least something to make them a little bit more unique besides the sprite work and the names. Obviously, we talked about some of the in-game user interface changes I would, I might like to see. Um, just more campaign. It's a good game. I like it. 
I'd like to see a second campaign with either the same same uh, continent or a second continent with some new characters. That'd be fun. Credits are pretty long. Run out of things to talk about. This episode's pretty long. Thanks for sticking in there, guys. Um, if they do do a second, like a, a sequel, I would... I would hope to get a little bit more... Like, I, I sort of felt like some of the side quests were a little bit lackluster, so maybe a little bit more time on those. I think they could put in more weather effects, because they had this sun-rain system, but it, there was very few maps where it rained. And rain does definitely affect, like, your your ranged unit's attacks, but it could also affect, like, your, your unit's movement. There could be snow, there could be heavy wind, um, there could be sandstorms. I could certainly see some, some different weather, and maybe have it sort of randomized so that well, at least on, maybe not exactly random, but at least on some maps there was sort of a cycle of, you know, sunny for a while and then windy for a while and then rainy and then maybe blizzard or something. You know, like, you know, sort of alternate between some of the different weathers. Fog of War, if you want to do more Fog of War maps, although it's a standard tactical mechanic, I feel like we need better AI balance for, for Fog maps and maybe a better um, scouting unit. Um, apparently dogs have the same vision radius as every other unit, except that they can see through forests. So if you want to do Fog of War maps and you want me to be happy, we need like, you know how Fire Emblem has like the light spell or the torch item? You need some way for your units to see a little bit farther into the fog where it just becomes a, a, a painful grind. But, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm sure lots of people like the, uh, the anxiety inducing fog maps. Don't let me uh, reduce your enjoyment of them. Anyway, thank you for watching Wargroove. I've certainly had fun playing it. And here we go. End credit scene. I, mean, I knew there was a reason to stick around. Hope you didn't Dad. skip this. I wish you had seen everyone today, Dad. You would have been so proud. You were a great king and an amazing father. And I wish you could have seen how well things turned out. So much of it is thanks to you. I'm going to try my best to live up to you. To be wise and kind and caring. To be a good queen. <laughs> I'm going to make you proud, Dad, I promise. What a good boy. Yeah. Might have an idea of what we need to do. If we want to go back for some secrets. Birds. On monuments with flowers. Have I spoiled it enough already? <laughs> anyway, that's awesome! We've unlocked Dark Mercia! And the Codex. I mean, maybe we'll read that later on. But for now, that's good. We're like two hours in. This was a super, super duper long episode, but I wanted to get it all in one video. In case you're wondering, uh, I, I have talked about it a couple times during the series. I eventually decided that I like... Mm, battles to be on one video even if they go on longer than 30 or 60 minutes like i would prefer uh i would rather get it all in one concise video so that it's all together rather than split in half or quarters across multiple days and um i do you know i apologize i know some people really like seeing all the battle animations but i feel like when we're doing a two hour map i have to start speeding through that a little bit or else it'll turn into a three or four hour map and that's just <sighs> too much too much so if, you know, if you're ever playing along, um, you know, do what you enjoy. But when, you're, when I'm trying to record, I'm trying to think of uh, the clock a little bit, you know. So anyway, speaking of the clock, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for probably some more arcade content. See how it goes. And I um, probably won't bother getting into this stuff. But uh, like I said, you can make new maps and campaigns. So anyway, thanks. See you guys later.